Welcome to SBME Interfaces. Our goal with this show is to introduce you to the people that interface with biomedical engineering from students and faculty to staff and industry and everyone in between. BME is a broad field that encompasses so many different perspectives, journeys, skill sets, and backgrounds, and we are excited to share them all with you. So we're very excited to have Leah and Nadine join us. They're the co-presidents of the Biomedical Engineering Undergraduate Student Association. Uh, Nadine is also co-founder of the Canadian Undergraduate Bioengineering Conference, which I believe will come over in the next couple of months. Uh, she has a passion for environmental sustainability. She's been a software developer, lab technician, outdoor school counselor, Irish dance instructor, which we want to learn more about in this interview. She's also part of the Varsity Outdoors Club and member of the was a member of the Concrete Toboggan Engineering Student Team. She's uh, going to be one of our first ever graduates uh, next year. She's in the Sailor and Bioengineering Student Wake. Welcome, Nadine. And Leia is in the third year of the program in Bioinformatics Stream. She also has a passion for environmental sustainability and activities including being a member of the UBC Zero Waste Squad, as well as co-chair of the EUS Sustainability Committee. She also spent some time looking at climate change and Arctic research in Churchill, Manitoba, uh, plays a saxophone and is or was a hockey player. So again, we want to hear more about that. So we'll get right into it. Uh, so, okay, so let's obviously start with um, the thing that's over everybody's head right now. Uh, so how are you both managing the remote learning experience? Uh, has there been like big challenges and uh, what have you heard from other students about it as well? I mean, okay, from my experience with it compared to other students, I think is very different and everyone will obviously have completely different um, takes on this. Um, I think I have been lucky that I haven't been struggling with it too much. Um, I do miss the social aspect of it in terms of being in class with others, interacting with them, and also like being able to stay after class and asking professors questions. Um, but otherwise, I think it's been pretty okay for me. Um, but yeah, I think other people have definitely struggled with it a lot more. Um. I mean, I will say that I think it's a lot easier for us being in third and fourth year rather than being in first and second year of your program, because at UBC, you start specializing in second year, meaning that's sort of where you meet your cohort and where you make your friends. Um, so for both of us, we have our friend groups. We have we know people in our programs that we can work on assignments with. Um, but I think the second years have definitely been struggling more. Um, for me, I'm only taking a few classes and then I'm doing full time research. So that's allowed me to have a good balance and not be super overwhelmed. But I know my friends who are taking the full engineering course load have dropped courses. I only know one who's stayed in the full course load. Sure, tough times and impacts everybody globally, but this we're learning as you're learning. So, uh, <laughs> so I want to take it a little bit back to the beginning and I'll start with Nadine um, as you'll be our first part of our first ever cohort that graduates. How did you learn about the SBME program and the BME program in SBME and what made you choose it? Well, I actually heard about it from peers in first year. So they were in the pre-biomed program, um, which I hadn't heard about at that point. So, and then I was like, oh, cool. And then um, later when I was coming to deciding, um, I was kind of leaning towards Chibi because there was the biological aspect of it. And then someone was like, well, why don't you just go into biomed? And I looked into it and I was like, well, this is exactly what I want. I wanted some biology aspect. I literally like medicine, um, like the science-y aspects of it as well, but I still want to do engineering and this just kind of puts everything together. So it was just exactly what I wanted. So it seemed like a no-brainer. Yeah, great. And Leah, what made you decide to pursue BME? Um, I decided when I was 15. I was <laughs> in a science competition the Sanofi Biogenius competition, which is basically where you get paired with like professors. I mean, I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba, so it was at the University of Manitoba. Um, and I helped develop like an asthma drug, and then we went and presented, and I was like, this isn't what I want to do. But at the presentation at the award ceremony, the keynote speaker was a biomedical engineer. 
and she just blew my mind. Um, and I went up to her after and I talked to her and I've been working in her lab ever since. Um, and <laughs> have been connected with her ever since. And she inspired me to pursue biomedical engineering. And she told me to go to UBC. And I said, yes, ma'am. Um, and here I am. <laughs> what about her blew your mind out of curiosity? It just, I never knew what I wanted to do. I liked science. I liked, I liked physics and I liked math. Um, I did not want to be a doctor. I hate medicine. I like passionately hate medicine. <laughs> Um, I'm in bioinformatics for a reason. I don't like anything to do with the human body and like touching it or seeing it. Um, <laughs> but I love the physics and that and sort of like the problem solving aspects of it. So I was considering engineering. My mom thought that maybe um, pharmacy would be an interesting thing for me. I knew I didn't think I wanted to do science. Um, so when I saw her go up and speak about how she combined code and biology and all the and all these like mathematical things that I'd never heard of because I was 15 in grade nine um, and combined them to create this device. She was working on virtual reality for Alzheimer's patients. Um, I was like, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. And I started volunteering in her lab and learning more about it and then did came to UBC in first year and realized I really like code which I never thought I would like like I always I never knew what I wanted to be honest I thought I'd more go like the systems and signals route but I found out that I really liked the computer side of it and it also I will say I think the goals of biomedical engineering align very strongly with a lot of my goals as an individual like in overall. Okay. Do you mind sharing who that? Oh, yeah. Her name is Dr. Zara Musavi. Zara um, Musavi, okay. Yeah. She's. Great, sorry. So we learned from you there why you chose bioinformatics. Yeah, what, uh, Nadine, sorry, what provoked you to go into the cellular bioengineering stream? I'm, I would say the opposite of Leah. I really like the. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've always really liked biology um, and especially like the cellular portions of it. It's it just insane. Like we can just go smaller and smaller. And then every single time I learn something about the cell, they're like, but this is just a small, tiny little portion of it. We're not going to get into it. People don't even understand all of it. And I'm like, this is just so complex. Like how <laughs> that makes sense. Um, so I really enjoy that and understanding how the body works. Like whenever I get a cut or like something is weird going on. Like I'm sick. I'm always looking up like, but well, why does this happen in my body? Like what, what causes this? So I really like that portion of it and like understanding how everything works. Mm -hmm. Has that been going well in the, in the stream you chose? Like, like, has it been giving you the insights you wanted? Yeah. So the thing I said about um, where they say we only know a small portion of it. So in one of the classes, um, BMAG three, seven, oh no. Now I can't remember the code. That is good. Um, anyway, so we, we learned about uh, signal transduction and just like different signal and cascades and everything. And that just blew my mind. And they were like, oh, but this is just one very simplified version of a path that is involved in many other paths that all talk to each other and interact. And like I can't even imagine how actually complex it is. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely getting that in the stream. It's interesting Heather, how we uh, put uh, send people to space and put people on the moon, but we know so little about our own body. It's just <laughs> yeah. It was, I did BME way before both of you, and even then it was it was still mind boggling. And how far we've come, but how little we still know. It's, it's an interesting thing. So. You've been in the program, both of you, for a couple of years now. What's what's really stood out for you? Maybe nothing, which is fine too. <laughs> Have there been any big surprises for you guys? I'm just trying to think. I mean, I did the pre-BME program, so I started in biomedical engineering in my first year. And I'd say what really stood out to me was the ability to start learning about exactly what I wanted in my first year of school. I was very, there's, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to come to UBC. Um, and 
at home, I would have gone into electrical engineering. And I was always like, I like these things, but I, I want to know how I want to know why. And I want to know how I can personally make a difference in this world using my degree. And I'd say what stood out to me is the BMAG 101 course, which is a course we take in first year if you're in the pre-biomedical path. Um, and what our professors did is they brought in speakers um, from speakers with like big name speakers and they came and they had pizza with their class and they just talked about the products they developed and their experience in the industry and it was just a casual conversation and to me I think we had four of them those were probably the standout moments of my first year is just directly getting to interact with these people and find out how I can start applying my degree at such a young age because I feel like that's something that's often lost in translation. Um, what you need, Yeah, so I don't think I actually really understood what biomedical engineering was when I went into it. I think it just kind of sounded like what I wanted to do. Um, and I think kind of throughout I realizing how broad of a field it is, which is really cool and also how new it is. So like everything, a lot of what's happening in biomedical engineering is pretty new and most of biomedical engineering hasn't happened yet, which is where we come in, which is super exciting. Like I think in other departments, yeah, there are new things happening, but I think a lot of it has kind of already been established. I could be wrong on this, but that's just my perception on it. Whereas this just seems extremely new, um, which is very exciting. There's lots of possibilities. And then another thing that stood out was the difference between first and second year was huge because of the professors we had. Everyone was extremely nice. They seemed like they actually cared about us as individuals. Um, they were willing to stay after class and talk. Not that first year profs wouldn't, but it just there was a more personal connection, um, which was a huge difference. And I really appreciated from second year, third year, fourth year. All the biomed courses I've taken so far have had profs like that, which we've been very fortunate to have. It's good to hear. It means our culture is, uh, is is working well, both at the uh, the student level and the uh, the faculty level too. Mm -hmm. uh, on that, by the way, like both of you have like this, this huge interest in environmental initiatives as well. Um, yeah. Can you can you tell us where does that come from? Like where like how did you how did you get into that originally? Um, do you want to go first? I don't even know where. I think I'm just kind of. I think maybe in school, like in elementary school, we were kind of introduced, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle, the whole thing. And it just really stuck with me. Um, like I remember once I was watching this ad on TV about a polar bear that was like the cub was separating from its mom. And I was like quite young and like that was like horrifying for me to see. And like, I, like everything I do, I'm like, okay, but like, how can we, what, this is horrible. Like, what do we do now? Um, yeah. I will jump in and say one of the yeah. main reasons Dean and I got so close was both of us <laughs> very passionate about sustainability um, and became sort of people we could talk to about our concerns. So that was a really great thing. Sorry, keep going. And like, so one thing Leah and I have talked about is the medical industry is not very environmentally friendly. Like it's very like single use, yeah. a million different layers to keep things sterile, throw it away. Like just, there's a lot of waste. And we've kind of talked about like, okay, well, we're in this field now. What can we do to minimize this waste? That is just huge. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. I guess the way I got interested in sustainability is I'd say similar to Nadine. Like I've just been part of my life growing up. I don't know why I was so interested in it. My sister actually pursued a degree um, in like environmental studies. Um, so obviously a big topic of discussion in our household. Um, on top of that, as was mentioned in my introduction and a really big factor in, I'd say like my goals as an individual was, um, I used to work up in Churchill, Manitoba um, on polar bear research, studying the effects of climate change firsthand. So um, I went up twice to conduct like the in-person research, but obviously we did all of our analysis back home. Um, but firsthand being out in the tundra, take, like, like conducting our analysis and going through and looking at the results of how like the sea ice melting has directly affected these polar bears and like 
uh, me being able to see even going back just like one year after the differences, I'd say was a huge factor for me and seeing also just, I think another thing that showed me was just how exclusive being sustainable can be and how lucky I am living in like living the life I live where I have the choice to be sustainable and the choice to not use these single use plastics and reuse my mug. And like, I found COVID very difficult going back to using not like single use products because I would not like I, if if I don't have my mug on me, I'm not getting a coffee. If I don't have my water bottle on me, that sucks. I can be thirsty. Like (laughs) my fork, my container, everything. Like I am one of those people. So Mm -hmm. this is a very interesting experience for me of going back and sort of having to accept for the safety. And I totally have, don't worry, I'm not using my own mug, but um, <laughs> definitely have also limited the number of times I purchase things. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's uh, both inspiring and I think a lot of people in this generation that's become forefront for them, right? Irrespective of what field they're studying. We have a lot of changes to make, but it's, uh, I think it's doable if we all collectively do it. So another theme both of you share is um, extracurricular activities on top of your coursework. Um, how do you balance studying and doing these things with this co-president of EME USA and other initiatives? I think you have to make some things a priority and realize that school is not the only thing. Um, if school is the only thing that might work for you, Sure, but I think majority of people, that kind of leads to, you're not well-rounded then because everything you're doing is not exactly what you want to do. Um, So I think you do have to take time, even if you're like, I might not spend four hours on this assignment. I might only spend two because I want to go spend time with my friends or go for a walk or something. Mm. Um, I think it's super important. I yeah, think it's, yeah. Oh yeah, I think it's also important to note Nadine and I are both in reduced course loads. In order to take this on and like put our full like force forward, we both decided that that's something we need to do. Um, so I think it's it's really about like finding your own balance and what works for you. To me, and I think for both of us, this is something we're very passionate about. Um, we are currently planning a conference with Miguel, as I know you mentioned again. Quebec, which is the Canadian Undergraduate Biomedical Engineering Conference. So that's going to be happening next weekend on November 14th and 15th. Um, And that, I will say, has consumed a lot of our time, like probably more time than BME USA for sure. Um, (laughs) But it's something that we've prioritized and decided was a really important thing to put on and provide to biomedical engineering students across Canada. And for that reason, you prioritize that. Sure. And so you can, you can't even, like, so we have, we've decided personally for us what's best is to take a reduced course load, but you can and should still try to strike a balance with a full course load. It might be less so than with a reduced course load, but still doing things, setting time out in your day where it's not school related. Um, Again, it might be less, it might be more, and maybe you are taking a full course load and you, your priorities lie a little bit more towards the extracurricular stuff. That's something that's going to change for everyone, but it is something that people need to strike. Sure. And I've observed that in engineering programs, students are pretty good at balancing both and doing both. I had that experience. Some may disagree. There's always the <laughs> those that choose other routes, but I find their engineering students are very engaged at some capacity. And sorry, I, I thought the, the, the Canadian undergrad conference was in a couple of months. It's in a couple of weeks. I should know who sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, SBME. Yeah, thank you. Oh, pleasure. Uh, when I was at UFT, our undergraduate club was called Q. Uh, so it's <laughs> but Can you speak more to us about the conference and what it's about? Yeah, so, okay. We... When we were just talking with McGill's bioengineering student club, um, just to meet up with them and see kind of how they're running their council and et cetera. And then during our conversation, we realized that there was this, a similar concern between undergraduate students and biomedical engineering 
at UBC and at McGill, so we'd assume everywhere, that we have this degree, we have studied for four, five, six years, whatever, and then people are concerned, like, what is out there for me after we graduate? Like, yes, there are positions, but like, I, what, what do I do with this? Um, and we wanted to allow them to be able to explore the options and see what actually is available and that people actually do want to hire us and that there's not just industry, there's academia, there's um, consulting, et cetera. We go through a bunch of stuff and it's essentially just to allow them to see what there is and kind of have this concern addressed. Um, yeah, so basically what the conference is going to be is we were lucky enough to get sponsored by SBME as well as McGill's Bioengineering, as well as a few um, industry sponsors um, making a free online conference that will take place next weekend. It's going to feature um, some keynote speakers, including um, SBME's Dr. Peter Crichton and Dr. Peter Zanstra. Um, as well as we're going to have a grad and PhD panel, um, an academia panel, an industry like biotech industry panel, a consulting panel, a LinkedIn workshop, a startup panel, um, among some other things. So it's basically just going to be a chance for biomedical engineering or just students interested in biomedical engineering. You do not need to be in biomedical engineering to attend. Um, students to meet each other, learn about different opportunities in the field and hear about some really cool things that are going on in it. That's good. It's a really good initiative. Uh, yeah, fantastic. All undergrads struggle with what they do with their degree with respect to what they do. And this is one of those things this is one of those things too with the with the biomedical field in particular because of its its broadness that I, I find that a lot that a lot of people are like, okay, like this is this is all great, but where do I go from here and, and what can I do? And the fact that there's so many options uh, is yeah, this is great that you are introducing people to those options. Thank you. We're very excited. Yeah. <laughs> it's all coming together. <laughs> yeah. Now, okay, so uh, I'm interested in this mostly because the, the, the title of this group caught me. Uh, Nadine, can you tell us a little bit more about your work with Concrete Toboggan Engineering Student Team? That's just a wonderful name, and I'd love to know more about that. <laughs> um, yeah, this is just the engineering team at UBC, and it's actually, so most universities in Canada, or a, a lot of them, have um, this design team. I think it's the oldest design team in Canada. Um, or the competition is like, extreme, goes back like years and years. And I had some friends who were in it um, and they introduced me to it. And it was just a design team. So we work on this toboggan where the only thing that's allowed to touch the snow has to be concrete. Um, and I've learned that there has been very many changes just over the past few years of what the competition allows. So previously it was essentially just like a toboggan made out of concrete that you slide down. And then they were like, well, that's not very safe. Um, <laughs> so like slowly they've added like a roll cage. So like if you do roll, make sure no one gets hurt. And there's just a lot of like technical things that go into it now um, to make sure that things are safe and allows for a lot more creativity. Um, there's now braking systems um, and there's lots of different tests. Yeah, so there's lots of tests that they go through, like a braking test, a steering test, et cetera. Um, yeah, and it was just something kind of fun to do that was not necessarily related to biomedical engineering, but engineering in general. Um, it was just a very fun team. That's awesome. Sounds fun. I know they do concrete the new teams, but I didn't realize yeah. they do teams. <laughs> um, Leia, talk to us about hockey. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I grew up in Winnipeg, so go Jets. Um, <laughs> hockey fan, very big part of my life. Um, I just like I grew up. I played ringette, and then I played hockey. Um, I quit because I have really bad knees, and I had to stop because I was destroying them. But I played for ten years. I was horrible. I loved it. I love skating. It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> um. I just have to limit it for my body's sake, but it was it was a really nice break from school and a break from the rest of things. And it was I learned that I can be really bad at something and still enjoy it. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's a good lesson to learn. Yeah. And, and 
Uh, Nadine, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, Irish dance? Does that play a big part in your life? It hasn't been since high school. Uh, university kind of, I just stopped then. But when I was younger, I really enjoyed watching um, Michael Flatley. I don't know if you guys know who that is. But Peter yeah, Flynn. so yeah, a lot of people don't know who he is. I'm like, well, this is a huge part of my life. But anyways, <laughs> Lord of Dance, uh, the guy that made River Dance, et cetera, et cetera. So I just watched him a lot. And then one summer I took a, like, try all dances, dance, uh, like, a summer camp. And I was like, yes, I'm going to do tap dancing. Like, that's what this guy, Michael Flatley, did. And then now I hate when people say it's uh, tap dance. I'm like, no, it is not tap dance at all. It was completely different. It's Irish dance. And anyways, I just got into it and then um, did it for six seven years it wasn't very competitive until like the last three years so I kind of had to start from the bottom because to in Irish dance to like get up the levels you have to pass the lower level so I kind of had to go back down but yeah that was very interesting it's very fun um so yeah. as, a side note, as a side note I got to see uh Lord of the Dance live in Edinburgh in Scotland Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like, uh, I want to say 2001 or something like that, or 2002. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, no, that stuff's amazing. amazing. I'm glad you guys know about it, because everyone, I'm like, yeah. Michael Flatley, they're like, Lord of Dance, they're like, no, I don't know. We're, we're, a, bit, we're a bit older than you two, so we would have seen him. <laughs> Hello, classmates. I'm no clue. Everyone needs to know him. He's No, it's really you two. <laughs> um... <laughs> We're almost at time to ask one last overarching question and then we go we'll close this out. Any advice here for people who are interested in coming to BME? You wanna share, put out the universe? Do it. Um, <laughs> That's good advice. I would say that I think BME is a super broad field. So if like if you're like me and you're interested in biomedical engineering, but you really don't know what you want, even if you're like me and like really scared of medicine, um, you can do it and find things you're interested in. Like at UBC in the undergraduate program, we have four streams. We have biomechanics, we have cells and signals, we have or no systems and signals, we have cells and signals, <laughs> and we have bioinformatics. Like those are four completely different places in the spectrum of what biomedical engineering is. And if you don't fit into any of those, that's fine. You can get your degree specializing it and find a career exactly where you want it. I think there's sort of a concept or an idea that biomedical engineering, you learn so many things that you don't actually know what you're doing and it's so spread out. And I think that you learn so many things, but you learn how to integrate them all together. And that's what's so unique and interesting about it is you learn the biology you would get from a science degree and you learn the engineering, in my case, the coding you would get from a computer engineering degree, but you learn how to integrate it and how to use them in the real world. And mm -hmm. it's just a very unique, exciting experience. Yeah, that's great advice. And at the end of the day, you know, as an engineer, you're a problem solver. So you, you can be specialized and broad at the same time. So Miguel, what's this up? Uh, sure thing. Okay, so uh, you, we already talked about the conference uh, and everything, uh, which is great, but is there anything else coming up, anything you guys are working on that you are excited about and you want other people to get excited about too? Um, <laughs> even well, if it's not BME related, even if it's not BME related. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a whole bunch of new sustainability initiatives with the Engineering Undergraduate Society, which is really exciting. Um, so we're working on like implementing a reusable cup program, of course, once that's safe after COVID, um, yeah. among increasing leadership for sustainability overall in the engineering society. So that's my fun side yeah. project. <laughs> I now can't think of anything. Um, <laughs> well, within BMUSA, we've, we're trying to run some events, but I think with the it, being online, we've had some struggles getting people involved, but we have asked people recently what they want to see. So hopefully we're going to come up with some things soon that um, will be fun, interesting, online, safe. So yeah. Awesome. So stay tuned then. <laughs>
Well, we want to thank you both again. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Thank you for being candid and sharing with us. And uh, we hope to see you graduate and go on to bigger, bigger things and then come back and present to the future students of what they can be.